Hello dear student, this is Dr. Sir from Dentapads, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD 8 at an EFK exam. Please like and subscribe my channel on YouTube and follow me on Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn and TikTok. Please do visit my website at dentabest.com where I'm offering different personalized and self-study smart learning program at a very affordable cost for my dear hardworking students. So in this topic, we are going to discuss different complications that can happen during endodontic treatment. So what all can go wrong during your endo treatment? Your tooth can get fractured, um, vertical or horizontal root fractures, then perforations, ledging, broken instruments inside the canal. This is all different complications. So the first complication we are taking here is the formation of a ledge. So ledge is actually an artificial irregularity that is created in the surface on the root canal that impedes placement of instruments to the apex. So this is something that you created while doing the RCT. So once you have a ledge, that means you cannot reach the correct working length. And instrumentation and obturation both are going to be short of apex and no longer it will follow the true curvature of the root. So what happened wrong during your procedure, you didn't follow a very important law or principle is to have a straight line axis. So while you prepare an axis cavity, it's very important to have a straight line axis of your instruments to go directly into the canal. Now if the axis is not straight, instruments are not going to go into the canal and what will happen? It will create an artificial irregularity or a ledge. Also the canals which are longer, which are more curved. They have more chance of ledging as compared to shorter canals or the canals which are with wider diameter or which are straighter. Now, canal which are not properly irrigated, inadequate irrigational lubrication, so that the ease of insertion for your instrument that comes with a good lubrication is not there. Excessive enlargement of the curved canals with the files. With files, one thing that is very important is files have a tendency to cut straight. If you don't pre-curve the files before inserting them, they can always cut straight and create an artificial canal which is called as the transportation. But we know the scenario is different these days with the rotary files that we are using. Now, let us talk about the next thing here. So what are the different ways by which you can correct a ledge? Relocate the canal and try to renegotiate. See, if you can remove the ledge, once the ledge has been removed, you are using lots of lubricant and picking motions to remove the ledge. And once your original canal has been located, you are using the reaming motion, which is clockwise, counterclockwise, and occasionally up and down movement to properly debride the canal. So the word debridement means is to remove all the necrotic tissue from the canal. You can go back and flare your access preparation. Now let's say if you are unable to correct the ledge, then what you are going to do? You are just going to fill up the canal, clean the canal and shape it at the new ledged working length. So all the complications that we have here right now, they are more difficult to manage if they happen in the earlier stages of your RCT when you are still debriding the canal, still cleaning it. Because if these complications happen in an earlier stage, that means you still have a lot of work to do. So these complications can lead to a failure of your RCT. But if they happen later stages of RCT where already the canals is properly debrided, irrigated, just what is the step remaining is to obturate the canal, then okay, you can just observe the patient with these complications. That means overall they will have a better prognosis at that point. Now the second complication that we can come across is the instrument separation. So this is not that common to have happened but when you are just a beginner, when you just started doing RCT on the patients, there are chances that you might break the file inside the canal because you don't know how much stress to put on the instruments when you are just starting up. Limited strength and flexibility of instrument and if you are using the instruments which are already uh, overused, excessive force that can also lead to broken instruments. The so most important thing is to know, recognize how much stress limitation on the instruments and using lots of lubrication and irrigation also helps because it will create less friction then and chances of breakage of file also become less. 
always examine any instrument before you place in the canal. So stainless steel file definitely come with the very obvious signs of distortion and when you need to replace them. But NITI files don't and should be discarded. So that's the reason we have single use files that are more common. Replace file as often as possible and never go to a larger file unless the smaller file is fitting loosely within the canal. Now try to bypass the instrument. So there is something called as the bypass technique. Bypass technique is when you are going apically and beyond. So let me try. Now let us try to understand what is the bypass technique. So bypass technique is when you go apically below and beyond the instrument. For example, so let's say this is your canal. Okay. And this is the coronal one third on the top. Then you have middle one third and then you have the apical one third remaining. Right? So if you it depends upon the prognosis of your broken instrument, depends upon what level is the breakage. So if the instrument is broken in the coronal one third, right? So you have better accessibility, you have better visibility, right? You can definitely uh, try to remove the broken instrument. What we are doing in the bypass technique, so let's say your instrument is broken here in the middle one third and this is the broken instrument that we have here. Now in the bypass technique, we are going to use a very thin file. We pre-curve the file before inserting it and then you are going below and beyond this broken instrument. So you are bypassing it. You are going below, beyond, apically in the apical direction. And then you are trying to loop out this broken instrument in the coronal direction. So this is what is called as the bypass technique. It's not that easy to use this technique clinically. And you will see 90% of complicated cases of RCT with some accidents or complication, they go to the endodontic surgeon who is going to raise the flap and then remove the broken instrument. However, if the instrument is broken in apical one third, you can just leave the instrument there and you can use it as a apical stop for you. Provided you're already in the advanced stages of your RCT, everything is cleaned, everything is debrided. And then this broken instrument acting like an apical stop, you're going to fill up the canal to this instrument level. You need to let the patient know about this and you have to put him on close recalls. Provided patient is asymptomatic, no swelling and no periapical radiolucency. If it does happen, the tooth will go for endosurgeries. Also the size of instrument, if it is a smaller size instrument, definitely it is difficult to remove. The instruments which are lodged under the curvature, difficult accessibility, they are difficult to remove. Now, now we are coming to another complication that is perforation. So perforation is an aetrogenic communication. Aetrogenic means that is induced by the operator. Of the two chamber, communication directly with the outside environment. So there are different types of perforations that can happen. You can have perforation at the coronal level, at the furcation where the roots are divided. You have strip perforation that's also called as zipping or the root perforation. So coronal perforations, they usually happen when you don't have a straight line axis and it's a failure to direct the bird towards the long axis of the tooth. So if you use proper magnification using your endoloops, transformation radiograph can prevent the coronal perforation. Furca perforation can happen while you are looking for the canal orifices and should be immediately repaired. While strip perforation, it happens on the furcation side of the coronal root surface. Now, the strip perforation has a very difficult accessibility. It is going to have one of the worst prognosis. Root perforation can occur at the apex by creating an artificial canal and that is called as the transportation. So perforation that is happening in the earlier stages of your RCT should be repaired immediately because once the perforations happen, that means your tooth is directly communicating with the external environment. The chance of infection and the bacteria flowing down is going to be very, very high. So how you know the perforations happen? Hemorrhage from the site, sudden pain, 
radiographically you will see okay my file is going somewhere out apex locator readings which are now well short of your working length and file deviates from the previous path patients can also have severe post op pain now how you are going to manage uh, the cases of perforation so the perforation prognosis it depends upon what level the perforation has happened if it happen above the crestal bone yes it has a favorable prognosis if it happens below the crestal bone it has a poor prognosis because recession will always happen when it is below the level of crestal bone recession permanent perio pocket formation the perforation definitely which are smaller they are easier to repair perforation that have occurred at a later stage of your rct when already the canal debridement has happened better prognosis sooner the repair is made better as a prognosis also if at the time of perforation the isolation was good chance of infection definitely will be lower so so we are talking about a term repeatedly here and that is what is prognosis see prognosis is an outcome of your condition or your treatment that how the disease is going to progress in future that is called as the prognosis of the condition so corneal perforation definitely have good prognosis because they have better accessibility furcal perforation should have to be repaired immediately and as i told you strip perforations which are also called as zipping they are hard to access and they have one of the worst prognosis so as i told you that level of uh, perforation what what level the perforation is happening is also important deciding factor so let us say you do not have any accessibility to the perforation spot you might require some surgical procedure like doing the crown lengthening or orthodontic extrusion along with anything that is untreatable right we can just go for the root amputation root amputation is when you are simply removing the root or extracting the root which is perforated so that is definitely only possible in case of your multi rooted teeth you can remove one root only that root which is having the perforation or you can do hemi section hemi section what you are doing you are cutting the tooth into two halves so let us say this is your mandibular molar and then surgically you are cutting the tooth into two halves and you are removing so this half you are removing half of it right so removing one half and retaining one half that is the hemi section so you removing that half that was having perforation in it and whatever half you are retaining you cannot just leave it like that right whatever roots are retaining in the root amputation you cannot leave it like that you have to do rct in the remaining now the repair of the perforation we have the mta that is also called as mineral trioxide aggregate it's a very good very biocompatible cement one of the advanced cement that will help in repair of perforation pretty quickly now the next complication that we can come across are the root fracture so one of the one we have is the vertical root fracture so vertical root fracture can occur along the long axis of the root and mostly you will see the clinical feature of it you have a isolated perio pocket so when you are probing the tooth everything looks normal in perio but at one point your probe is going very deep that's a isolated pocket that could be a sign of vrf or vertical root fracture and the most common reason why the vrf happens that while you are doing the obturation you are putting too much of force too much of condensation force and that is leading to vrf now what are the different ways by which you can visualize the vrf of course radiographs are not as promising you can always miss the vertical root fracture but if does appear it will show like a j shaped radiolucency of vertical root fracture but the best way of visualizing a vrf is what is called as exploratory surgery so exploratory surgery is when you are raising the flap and then you are directly visualizing it that where the fracture is so this is all about the perforations uh, or the complications that you are going to have during the rct this is all about uh, the complication that can arise during your rct procedure thank you so much for watching my video study hard but study smart